So here's a question. Did you ever try to set new habits and you have this right intention in place, you want to make sure you kind of do it consistently, but unfortunately never really worked out that way? And just like myself, who tried this countless times before, and I failed miserably all the time, I just can't seem to maintain a specific habit long enough to make it into a long-term consistent one. If that's you, my friend, don't worry, I've been there and I know what it's like. And in this video, I'm going to talk about Atomic Habits, which is an amazing book that I've been reading for the past few years. I actually read it once a year, just to remind myself of how to embrace some of these concepts again and again. And in this book, a New York Times bestseller, James Clear, actually lays out a great plan on how you can break these habits and goals down into digestible, atomic, tiny, tiny pieces that you can apply to what you do in your life, in your business, and everything else in between. So if that's what you're interested in, and also hearing about how I've embraced these in my own life, then let's get to it. Hey there, I'm Lori Wang. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, it's so great to have you here. I'm a creator building my passions in the trenches and I'm sharing my lessons along the way. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time I release a new video. Now, first, I think James Clear has done a great job on laying a foundation on how we actually form positive or negative habits over time. So habits are essentially tiny, tiny actions that we do automatically on a daily basis. So things like you might wake up in the morning, you get out of bed, then you go brush your teeth, you take a shower, and you do all of these things without even thinking about it, right? Because it's just what you do every day. But unfortunately, embracing a positive change, one that may be a little bit hard to tackle, probably will take a lot more patience and a lot longer time. So these might not be the automatic things that you do every day, but things that you want to do more often. And because of that, that's why often we find that we fail in the way that we embrace these new positive habits, like going to the gym, right? Or eating more healthily. It's because we just don't do them long enough for them to stick around. Now, there's a quote that I want to share with you in the book, which I think has been so profound in helping me change and embrace everything that I've done ever since I started reading this book. And that is, changes that seem small and unimportant at first will compound to remarkable results if you're willing to stick with them for years. We all deal with setbacks, but in the long run, the quality of our lives often depends on the quality of our habits. With the same habits, you end up with the same results. But with better habits, anything is possible. And I love that about this, is because at the end of the day, it's about thinking what the long game is in terms of how you're embracing that patience over time. And as I mentioned earlier, with atomic habits, is that it's that tiny, small, tiny step that you're doing every single day that eventually will add up to the ultimate result that you're looking for. And as James Clear said, an atomic habit is a tiny part of a larger system. Just as atoms are the building blocks of molecules, then atomic habits are the building block of big results. Which also now brings us to the point of why is it so hard to build good habits like I've tried in the past and also get rid of the bad ones. Now, I think James then broke it down into three factors and how we can actually embrace better habits and get rid of the bad ones at the same time. And these are conditioning, minor improvements, and compound interest. Now, conditioning is basically something that we do on a regular basis that we enjoy until it becomes automatic. So in my example, every time I come home, I always put the kettle on because I enjoy a nice good cup of tea while I'm winding down from the day. And even doing this in the middle of summer as well. But if it's a bad habit, like biting my fingernails, if I'm in a really difficult situation, then that gives me a bit of comfort, and hence why there's a conditioning behind that to make me feel a little bit better, and that's why you continue to bite your fingernails going forward. So this is something that I would like to get rid of, and something I've been working on, by using conditioning as a method as well. Now the concept of minor improvements have really blown my mind. The reason for that is James broke it down into very much a math version of how this works. But essentially, imagine that you improve yourself on a 1% basis every single day. So a tiny, tiny bit, like 1%. And imagine doing that for 365 days of the year. When that's actually compounded over time, that gives you 37 times better than what you were a year ago. 
that's a lot of improvements from just 1% per day, which doesn't seem like very much on a daily basis. And that's exactly the point that he's trying to make, is that as we're improving ourselves by just a tiny little bit every day, which seems very achievable, in a year's time, you'd be surprised at where you end up as well. So ultimately, remember that massive, massive results don't always require massive action, but rather it's about breaking that thing down, which we do through things like the way we do our project list, right? How we break down a specific task to make it more achievable. But in this case, it's a much bigger habit that you want to embrace on a long-term basis. And how do you make it so achievable every single day that in a year's time, you look back into how much more you've accomplished because of it. And compound interest pretty much lays on top of the last point in the sense that at the end of the day, it's that tiny, tiny changes every single day that eventually compounds itself into exponential results. And actually, another similar book that if you're interested in this is called The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy, who talks about this in a much more detailed way. And I agree to the fact that to achieve success in the long term, you should probably break these down to tiny atomic habits that you embrace every single day, like meditation, journaling, going to the gym, uh, exercising in your own way, or eating well, getting enough sleep, etc., etc., and doing regular reading and learning. So all these things really compound into eventually who you become as a person, which on a daily basis doesn't seem like very much, but they do really matter in the long term. Now, one thing I love what James talked about is about the systems versus goals, is that ultimately, if something didn't work in the past with one of the habits you've been trying to embrace, it's the fact that actually, maybe it's not about the goals that you're looking for, it's about the system that you're falling back into. And the way that he talks about it is that goals is often the results that you're looking for, but systems is a number of processes that will eventually lead to them. And behind these systems, there's a concept called habit loops. So the way that James broke it down is the fact that actually, for example, let's say we like to drink coffee. Now, the first thing you get up is in the morning, and that's a cue where you get up thinking about you want to feel more awake. And then because you want to feel more awake, then you go ahead and make yourself a coffee, and then you drink it. And once you drink it, you will feel more alert, which is the reward that you feel after drinking coffee. And therefore, this whole positive loop starts and finishes, and every single morning you do the same thing over and over again because you're driven by the fact that you want to stay alert for the rest of the day. So learning from that as a habit loop, then this is how we actually then put it all together and four ways to help you form those positive habits and get rid of the bad ones. Number one is make it obvious. Now, this is a really good one that I think all of us should embrace more of. And one thing I try to do more of in my own personal life as well. So I don't always go to the gym if I don't have everything ready. I might scramble and I might get late and miss the classes. And I think to myself, what's the point? And I just give up altogether that whole entire day. Now, imagine the night before I prepare all of my gym clothes and my gym bag with all the water bottles and everything ready in there. And then in the morning, once that time hits, I leave the flat feeling energized, feeling ready and not pressured or stressed, trying to run and make, make it in time then this is where the ultimate magic happens, that you made it so easy for yourself, make it so obvious that you can't really miss it. And that applies to so many other things that we can do more regularly in our lives as well. Like for example, planning for the day ahead. Something I've been doing a lot more of using my bullet journal in the last four years. So number two is make it attractive. Now, this is something that you want to make sure that this specific habit, you're making as fun as possible. So one example that I do is I put on my favorite TV show when I'm on the treadmill at the gym or on the exercising bike because I'm there stationary anyway so I can consume my favorite TV show at the same time while I'm trying to work up a sweat. Number three is making it easy. Now, this is something I really struggled with for a very long time, and that is meditation on a daily basis. I say this every year, I want to meditate every single day if I can, but somehow there are days when you're thinking, I'm just too busy to do it. But actually, those are the days when you need meditation the most, am I right? So what I've done instead is embracing the process of making it easy. And what I mean by that is essentially doing it only for one minute a day, and for as long as I can, until I have a form of a basic habit from doing one minute a day, and I stretch it to two minutes a day and then three minutes, and then four. And now I can actually do up to 10 minutes a day without having to miss it. Just because you formed a habit behind doing it, and it's something that you just do automatically anyway. So pick a consistency that you're happy with, 
and then pick a time that you're able to do that activity for. And then actually slowly stretch that time longer and longer until you can maintain it on a regular basis for that longer length of time. And number four is make it satisfying. Now this involves you giving yourself a reward every time you do a positive change or a positive habit. So for example, you might transfer some money into your vacation savings fund for your upcoming vacation if you do another positive habit on that daily basis. Or maybe you've done something for a week and then you give yourself a reward for that. Whatever it might be, have something that you're looking forward to and be able to commit to that consistency on a regular basis so you don't actually make yourself feel bad that you haven't done it. And lastly but not least, I want to just mention that at the end of the day, we're all human. There's going to be days like myself where you're going to be off course and just try again the next day. It's okay. No one is judging. So I hope you found the video helpful in giving you insight into how I embrace atomic habits in my own life, but also how I hope that you can use it as well. And if you like the video, make sure to give the video a thumbs up and share it with a friend to help them also on their own personal development journey. And let me know in the comments below, have you ever tried to set a positive habit or get rid of a bad one? And how they work out for you? Are you looking to embrace any of these strategies in what you do going forward? And if you read the book as well, I'd love to hear your review too. I look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, have a great day, have a great week, and I'll see you next time.